Hey everybody, Mac here, and welcome to Comic Book Wednesday. What we have in front of us are two Marvel Legends series figures. One's a little bit older, one's a little bit newer. And if you've watched the channel enough, you know I don't really dive into Marvel Legends that much unless I bought those figures for a specific reason, and that specific reason we will get into at the end of the video. But for now, what we have is the Hand Ninja and Marvel's Katie from Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Packaging is what we expect from the Marvel Legends series, where it's just that black box, the big open window. Up top, sometimes there's a symbol. Shang-Chi has one. The Hand Ninja does not. On the sides, we have artwork of the two figures inside. On the back, we typically have a picture, a short bio, and then the cross-sell. Over here, we have the picture, a short bio, but no cross-sell. And I can't help but wonder if that's because this is not part of the standard series of the Shang-Chi figures that Katie is, to the best of my knowledge, a Target exclusive. So maybe that's why she's not included with the rest of the, the, of the wave. But her bio is Katie, Shang-Chi's oldest friend, is free-spirited and fiercely loyal, which doesn't really tell us much about the role she plays in the upcoming movie. And I am, I, I am not a... I am not very knowledgeable on Shang-Chi or his cast of characters in the comics or anything like that. I'm, I'm aware of him. I know he came up out of the 70s. But I don't think she's in the comic. And I think her lack of popularity, because there's a lot of Katie's still hanging on pegs at Target. But I think her lack of popularity might be sort of in the same, same uh, problem as, what's her name, Akiko? from the Snake Eyes movie line, that because they're new characters, we don't know what role they play. There's not a whole lot of, oh, gotta get that one, gotta get that one. Whereas the Hand Ninja over here, skilled in martial arts and espionage, the ninjas of the hand are a force to be reckoned with. The Hand Ninja have been around for decades. If you've read Spider-Man or, or Daredevil, especially, and we also know that the infamous Foot Clan was inspired by the Hand Clan. So, the Hand have been around for a while. Also with this, we have our Build-A-Figure of Stilt Man, which, since this is the only figure I have of this line, we're not even going to be doing that. Flip the boxes over to the side, we have that same artwork on there, and that brings us back around to front. So, without further ado, let's get them out of the boxes, and we will take a look at the Hand Ninja and Marvel's Katie. All right, friends, out of the box. And what we're going to start with is the Hand Ninja first. And the first thing we do is we put the tape measure to him, see what he comes out at. So with Hasbro, we put a tape measure to him. He is, at the top of his hood, roughly six and three quarters. Nah, nah, more like six and a half to the top of his hood. Probably about just shy of six and a half to the top of his head. But we'll never know because this hood doesn't come off. This is all one piece, this sculpt right here. If we pop, see how that is just all one. It's all glued together. The hood is glued to the head sculpt, so it won't pop off like it did with Storm Shadow when we took a look at the G.I. Joe Classified line. So, put that back on. Well, before we do that, you can see that there's a ball joint with a hinge. It's a very tight hinge right there. So, I put the head back on. And because the hood is glued to the head and it doesn't really sit on his shoulders, you're always going to have a gap right in there between the hood and the chest or the main body of the figure. And if that doesn't bother you, then that won't bother you. But if, if something like that, if you're the kind of person that that's going to annoy, mm, mm, there's really no way to fix that. It's almost like it's high enough up that he should have a red cape or something to fill that in. But... Enough of that. Let's get on to the articulation of this guy. That with that head, oh, and that really, whoop, and that really stiff neck joint, he can look up. He can look down and bury the chin. Not a whole lot of tilt to the head, but he does have full 360 rotation. Arms come up. Full spin. He has a butterfly joint, a small, stiff butterfly joint in the shoulder. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, wrist swivel, pivot in and out. Now this one pivots in and out, but this one, his sword holding hand, pivots up and down, which I'm really happy about. Anytime they have a weapon, I feel like they should pivot up and down. 
he has he has a torso twist here with some crunch, but he also has a hinge, and you can sort of see it if you pull the skirt down. He has a hinge right there, so he can really get some mobility. Wow, he can really bend back. <laughs> he can really get some mobility out of him for articulation-wise. This is actually very soft, so it's not going to traffic cone his legs when they come forward. When they go back, out to the side, not too bad. Thigh swivel, double jointed knees, a boot cut, ankle goes back really far, not so much forward, but there is a forward facing pin for some ankle twist. So that is the articulation, pretty much what you expect from a, a Marvel, from a Hasbro figure at this point. Although his arms don't come down all the way to the side. He's always going to have a little bit of a flare right there. But honestly, it's not. It, that doesn't bother me. I think that's pretty good. The detail on him, that while it is basically just an all red gi that he's wearing, I really like the detail, Like especially in his belt. His sheath doesn't have too much on the back. But you see he has these coloring for the buckle. He has these throwing stars tucked into the sash. On the back, you can see some texturing done to it, like it's wrapped right there, which I really like as well. And even in the belt, you can see the texturing in the belt and all of the wrinkle work in the in the over suit. He has that different shading of red for the underbody garment, which matches his bracelets or his bracers. You see he has some rope tied off at the arms. And then even the work done on the boots. I think is a really nice touch with the uh, with the split toe for the tabby down here. And I wish, since they painted the buckles up here, I really wish they would have painted the buckles in down here on the boots. I think that would have been, that would have just made the whole, the whole look and the whole paint app of this guy just perfect. I mean, he's really good as is, but if they would have put that one little minor detail down there on the feet... I think that would have just set the whole thing off, and then he would have looked just really, really good. Now, I am not familiar... Whoop, let me get this up a little bit. I am not completely familiar with Daredevil. I don't read Daredevil. I know his nemesis. I know the Hand Ninja are, like, one of his big enemies, and I think they trained Psylocke and Elektra. I'm not entirely certain, but I don't know why they have these green eyes. Because as you can see, hold on, let me see if I can get this focused in here. Uh, as you can see here, he has, there we go, he has these green, like, mystical eyes. I don't know what that's all about. But I do think that the green really stands out, really pops, compared to the reds and the blacks that make up the majority of this figure. That really makes them stand out. That really gives them an ethereal quality to them, I feel. And I think that is a really good touch. Now, as far as accessories go, he comes with a second set of hands. He has these open-clawed combat hands. He has these two comma, which I really like, and I'm a little bit jealous about this because the... Some of the Joe figures, like what they call the Red Ninja and the Special Edition Snake Eyes came with Kama, and they didn't look nearly this good. The handles didn't look nearly this good. The blades weren't painted. These look great. And then he has his straight blade Ninjakin, which I really like. I really like when they give a ninja the proper sword, because a lot of times there's this... Um, there's this need, or this this notion that you have to give him a katana with a curved blade, but I really like when they give him the straight blade Ninjakin. And if we can get a close look at this, you can even see that there is some really good detail work, like some etching done in the blade, going out of their way to make it look worn, make it look metal, make it look like it's been used and sharpened. And the Ninjakin here fits really well. He has a sheath on back. It fits really well in this sheath. Now, 
as much as I like the sheath and as much as I like the, the baldric that's holding it on, the bandolier that's holding it on, it is very loose on the figure. And sometimes that can get annoying. Sometimes that can get in the way when you're trying to pose him or when you're playing with him. You'll get it to a certain point and then you'll go to move something else and then this will shift and loosen up. But that also means that you can, with some minor work, minor stretching, you can get it off so that you can have just a red-bodied ninja. And while on one hand that does look cool, without that touch of black going across the chest, I feel like it's really missing something. So let's just put that back on. All right, next up we have Marvel's Katie right here. And just like with the Red Ninja, the first thing we're going to do... I'm sorry, with the Hand Ninja, the first thing we're going to do is put the tape measure to her and see how she measures up. And she's shorter, so she comes just under six inches tall. So she is at the six-inch scale. She is shorter. The actress that plays her, Aquafina, I don't know how how tall she is. I didn't bother to look that up, but I think she is a shorter woman. So this may be pretty much in scale with the with the actress herself. Something I do like, and I, we talked about the detail on the Hand Ninja, look at the floral pattern in her sash and in her robe dress. And it goes all the way around. I really like that. I think that looks really good. And you have some texturing to the dress right here. There's not much to the dress because it's just red, but I think they did a really good job with the fabric wrinkles, with the texturing, with the little bit of paint that they could add to it that it, it's not dull. It's not boring. It's not something that you're just going to look at and go, oh, it's a red dress. Like, there is enough to catch your eye and draw your attention to it. Now, with this big mane of hair, she doesn't really... Her head won't go back much. Her head will go forward, and she can do a full 360 turn. Some really good head tilt. I didn't realize notice that before when I was playing around with her, but some really good head tilt. Much better than the Hand Ninja. Shoulder comes up. No butterfly, but it does do a full 360. Single jointed elbow that goes a little bit past 90 and has a swivel at the elbow. Wrist pivot, swivels, or wrist, I'm sorry, wrist swivel, pivot in and out. Same thing with the other hand, both in and out hands. Now she has a waist twist and she has a little bit of a ball joint at the waist, but as you can see, if you go back too far, her sash will start to gape. So, but she does have some really good movement with her waist swivel here. Now comes the problem, because if you open this up, you can see that she does have double jointed knees. And they can get some really good bend out of them. She also... Uh, the hips will come out, but not very much. And this leg, just forget about it. It's not doing anything. This is a very stiff. This isn't cloth. This is plastic. So it really traffic cones her whenever you're trying to do anything with the legs. So much to the point that there's really not a whole lot. There's not much you can do from the waist down with this figure. And she does look at that ankle pivot, though. Her ankle goes all the way back, all the way forward. It's so much ankle pivot. It's so much of a crime that you can't really do much with her. And... She has a forward-facing pin for Rocker, and I didn't even notice that. She does have a bit of a, I don't know if you call it a boot cut, but there is another pivot there. She can do the Lucy. She, <laughs> there is another pivot there just above the ankle, like in place of the boot cut. So that's it for her articulation. From the waist up, not bad. Pretty much what you come to expect from the Marvel, or from the Hasbro female characters. Really wish they would start giving them double-jointed arms, but I understand why they don't. It's so thin that it would really cut into the sculpt that the, the all you would see would be the trenches, that there wouldn't be... We saw that with McFarlane with the Wonder Woman, 7-inch Wonder Woman action figure, that her arms are really all just trench, that it kind of takes away from it whenever you're looking at her. Now, for accessories, she has a bow. Well, first, yeah, she has this bow, and... It's kind of thick, and she has such small hands that when you put it in her hand, one, it kind of stretches the hand out, and two, she doesn't really hold it properly or securely because of how small her grip is on it. She also comes with 
this quiver, which is really nicely detailed. I really like this quiver. All right. She has this quiver, and she also has this mold of three arrows together, and those tuck in right there, and then her bow fits in this part right here. And then this whole thing, oh, let's take this off. Let's put the bow in here so you can see how that works. See, the bow goes in like that. And then this goes on her back. And ideally, I think this piece is supposed to come up front. And then this just lays across her torso. And ideally, there we go. That looks pretty decent on her. The problem comes, though, that, like, her hair interferes with it. So that when, once again, when you're trying to pose her, when you're trying to play around with her, even if you want to move her head... She's not coming out of this position because if you move her head, the, 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 the sash from the quiver is going to fall down off of her shoulder and then the quiver is just going to fall and it's going to look a mess. It was really hard. I shouldn't say hard, but it was really annoying getting the pictures that I did get for this video because I had to keep, I would move her, I would pose her, and then I would have to change the reposition the quiver and then set her down and it just got a little annoying. And then she finally also has this, this single arrow that she can hold. But this is, if you take a look at it here, hold this. Oh, wait, let's pull these out. And if you take a look at them, the arrows that you get to stash in the quiver versus the arrow that you have for the single is, there's a noticeable size difference. So while these will tuck in back here, this one doesn't fit in the quiver. There's not enough room. You really have to jam it in there. And ideally, this is something that she can hold and sort of knock on the bow. But one other thing that I don't like about this bow, and Hasbro rarely does this. I don't understand why they did it with her, is that the bow has a string, and it's a really heavy, white, plastic string. And I don't get why they put the string on her, because it, if you try and put her into a shooting position, which you really can't do because of the limited arm articulation, the string, the string isn't going to pull back. The string's not going to look right. I might actually snip this off so that it's just the bow, because I feel like the, the mold of the bow is strong enough that it will hold position even if we cut the strings off and just give it that clean look like we're used to from some of the Marvel bow accessories. See, if we slip this in her hand, and you'll see it in the photos too, it doesn't, you really can't get a full, uh, and that keeps falling, you really can't get a full knocked position out of her. At least I haven't been able to. Maybe somebody else has, but I haven't been able to get that. Also, let's talk about her face sculpt. Because while I think it is a decent face sculpt, and it might be very accurate to the actress, I'm not sure. But it's very featureless. It's very dull. It's very boring. Because when you read, when you read up on her bio, whoops. When you read up on her bio on the back of the box, it says, Shang-Chi's oldest friend, free-spirited and fiercely loyal. That doesn't look like the face of somebody that's free-spirited. That looks like the face of somebody who's always walking around in a constant state of miserable. I don't know. I just feel like this face should have had... And Aquafina is a uh, comedian, isn't she? Like, I feel like this should have had just a more expressive face. And no, that's not me saying, oh, she needs to smile more. I just, I think, I think this could have benefited from some personality in the face rather than just this dead look, much like how he had with Major Blood and that smirk on his face. Now, in addition to these, there are a few accessories that come with her. She has these fists, these little balled up fists for fighting poses. And she has this thing. That quite honestly, I have no idea what this is, so I'm not even going to try to get into it. But I do like the coloring, like this little, this little bit of purple and blue on the feathers 
of this thing. I don't know. I don't know if it's her pet, if it's some mystical creature. I don't know. We'll have to wait for the movie to come out. But that's what we get with her. Now, something else that I forgot to mention with the Hand Ninja here is that his pack-ins, he comes with two legs for the Stilt Man Build-A-Figure, but also, and where did I put it? He also comes with this clear display stand. So Hasbro did something very, very smart with this, considering this is a Build-A-Figure. With the Stilt Man figures, you're able to pop them off, from what I understand. Yeah, hold on. Ugh. See how the foot comes off. And then you can put it in the top of another one. And you can just extend Stilt Man's feet. So they put the piece of the Builder figure that you would want more of with the Army Builder figure. But they also put the display stand in with the Army Building figure. So that... You'll get extra stands, which you can use for pretty much anything. You don't have to use it for Stilt Man, but you also get additional legs so that you can really make Stilt Man a huge Stilt Man. Now comes the part of why I wanted to get these figures, and that is because, like I do with most of my 6-inch figures, I'm going to use these to pad out my G.I. Joe line. Remember when I did the review of the Red Ninja from the G.I. Joe series, and I said he looked more like a Night Creeper from the Vintage line, rather than what I remember the Red Ninja being? Well, the Hasbro Hand Ninja right here is a dead ringer for the original Red Ninjas, for the original Arashikagi Ninja from the Marvel comic. So they, he, this figure, <laughs> is going to be in my Cobra display as an actual Arashikagi Ninja, and then off Storm Shadow, and then the other one will be, in my mind, the Night Creeper. Something else that I really liked, right towards when I was starting to get out of collecting G.I. Joe, when I was starting to get into high school, they were really big on the Ninja Forces for G.I. Joe. You had Ninja on Cobra, you had Ninja on the Joes, and we came out. they came out with a bunch of figures. Jinx, Bushido, um, there was a Green Ninja later and another in the other lines whose name I can't remember right now. But I really liked the look of the Ninja Force, how each of them was different. So Katie here is going to get added into my Joe line as part of the Ninja Force. And, and, calm down, calm down, before anybody tells me, yes, I am aware that Shang-Chi is Chinese and Ninja are Japanese. I am aware of this. I am also aware that there is a very big difference between the Chinese and the Japanese. So please, don't freak out about that. But I am also aware that this is an action figure, and it's mine, and I can do whatever I want with it. We can do whatever we want with these figures. We can fit them into a collection however we want to. And I really think that she is going to look good packaged in, or not packaged in, she's going to look good standing among the eventual ninjas that we'll get for the Joe line, who knows, she could be a stand-in for Jinx right now until we get Jinx, and then she can just help fill out that roster. And there we have it, friends. Two figures that have absolutely nothing to do with each other other than in my own headcanon. The Hand Ninja and Marvel's Katie from Legend of the Ten Rings. And every time I say Legend of the Ten Rings, I have to catch myself, because back in the 90s, I think it was, there was a series of books called Legend of the Five Rings, and I always just want to say that. But out of the two, I have to say, I think I prefer the Hand Ninja. I just like the darker coloring. I like the, the, the richer detail. Also, his hands are softer, that they'll open up when you try to put a weapon into his hand, but I don't feel like they're just going to eventually loosen to the point that it'll start dropping them. They seem to, like, get a good grip on it. Katie's hands, a little too small for her bow accessory and for trying to put anything else in them for that matter. And I feel like eventually they will stretch too far that she won't be able to hold things properly. But I do like the dress. I think she looks good with the quiver on once you can get it into a position where it'll sit. And I also, I, I, I just think this dress really hinders her articulation. It really, really traffic cones her whenever you're trying to do anything posing wise with from the waist down. But that's what I have to take a look at today. Let me know what you think. I know this guy's been out for probably about six months now. She's been out for, I think, a month now. Do you have either one of them? 
Did you pick up Katie? There's plenty of her hanging on the pegs at Target, so I'm willing to bet no. <laughs> so until next time, my friends, play well, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, thank you for watching.